Loves the Night by Nicola Davies, illustrated by Sarah Fox Davies. The genre of our story this week is narrative nonfiction. Narrative nonfiction gives information about a topic but is told as a story. As you read, look for factual information that tells a story, features such as captions and realistic illustrations, and events that are told in time order. Let's meet our author, Nicola Davies. Nicola Davies has always been interested in animals. As a child, she spent much of her time in the garden looking at ants and bird nests. After college, Nicola Davies worked as a zoologist. She studied bats, geese, and whales. Now Nicola Davies combines her love of animals and her writing. She has written books about sharks, turtles, and polar bears. Let's meet our illustrator, Sarah Fox Davies. While Sarah Fox Davies was making the illustrations for Bat Loves the Night, a bat flew into her studio. It landed right on her desk. Fox Davies likes to draw animals in their natural environments. Her drawings of bats, beavers, bears, and other animals have appeared in many different magazines and children's books. Fox Davies used pencils and watercolors to create the realistic illustrations for this book. As we read, let's think about this essential question. What makes bats interesting and useful? Bat is waking, upside down as usual, hanging by her toenails. Her beady eyes open, her pixie ears twitch. She shakes her thistle-down fur. She unfurls her wings, made of skin so fine the finger bones inside show through. The pipistrelle bat's body is no bigger than your thumb. Now she unhooks her toes and drops into black space. With a sound like a tiny umbrella opening, she flaps her wings. Bat is flying. A bat's wing is its arm and hand. Four extra long fingers support the skin of the wing. Out! Out under the broken tile into the nighttime garden. Bats can see, but in the dark, good ears are more useful than eyes. Over bushes, under trees, between fence posts, through the tangled hedge, she swoops untouched. Bat is at home in the darkness as a fish is in the water. She doesn't need to see. She can hear where she is going. Bat shouts as she flies, louder than a hammer blow, higher than a squeak. She beams her voice around her like a flashlight, and the echoes come singing back. They carry a sound picture of all her voice has touched. Listening hard, Bat can hear every detail. The smallest twigs, the shape of leaves. Using sound to find your way like this is called echolocation. The noise bats make when they shout is too high for humans to hear. Gliding and fluttering back and forth, she shouts her torch of sound among the trees, listening for her supper. All is still. Then a fat moth takes flight below her. A bat can eat dozens of big moths in a single night, or thousands of tiny flies, gnats, and mosquitoes. Bat plunges, fast as blinking, and grabs it in her open mouth. But the moth's pearly scales are moon dust slippery. It slithers from between her teeth. Bat dives, nets it with a wing tip, scoops it to her mouth. This time she bites hard. Its wings fall away like the wrapper from a candy. In a moment, the moth is eaten. Bat sneezes. The dusty scales got up her nose. Most species of bats eat insects, but there are some that eat fruit, fish, 
frogs, even blood. Hunting time has run out. The dark will soon be gone. In the east, the sky is getting light. It's past bats' bedtime. Bats are nocturnal. That means they rest by day and come out at night to search for food. She flies to the roof in the last shadows and swoops in under the broken tile. The place where bats sleep in the day is called a roost. It can be in a building, a cave, or a tree, so long as it's dry and safe. Inside, there are squeakings. Fifty hungry batlings hang in a huddle, hooked to a rafter by oversized feet. Bat lands and pushes in among them, toes first, upside down again. Baby bats can't fly. Sometimes mother bats carry their babies when they go out. But mostly, the babies stay behind in the roost and crowd together to keep warm. Bat knows her baby's voice and calls to it. The velvet scrap batling climbs aboard and clings to Bat's fur by its coat hanger feet. Wrapped in her leathery wings, the baby snuggles to sleep. Baby bats drink mother's milk until they learn to fly at a few weeks old. Then they can leave the roost at night to find their own food. Outside, the birds are singing. The flowers turn their faces to the sun. But inside the roof hole, the darkness stays. Bat dozes with her batling, waiting. When the tide of night rises again, Bat will wake and plunge into the blackness, shouting. Bat loves the night. The end. I hope you enjoyed our story. See you next time. Bye.